this episode, I head back to the billion dollar coal field of West Virginia in McDowell County. Today, I'm going to war. Regardless how you make your way to war, you're just a few miles away from Berwyn Lake, an area designated to help attract tourism with cabin rentals and close access to the Hatfield and McCoy trail system. War is West Virginia's most southern city, on a map that is. Now I've said before, my roots go deep here. That's why I keep coming back to places like McDowell County. I think the people, places, and stories of Appalachia are something worth exploring and sharing. That's the whole motivation behind this Exploring Appalachia series. I realize some of these places I visit may not look like much to outsiders or the rest of the world, but these are the very places that at one time in history, not all that long ago, helped fuel industry and provided the raw natural resources to build and power these United States. So their story and their memory deserve to be acknowledged. Coming into war from the south, you'll pass through a little area called Warrior Mine. It follows the War Creek, which joins with the dry fork of the Tug River. War got its name from War Creek and is distinctly the only town in the United States with that name. Apparently Native Americans named the creek in the late 1780s for a battle that took place near its source. Before 1920, War was known as Minor City, which is a fitting name for a town in the rugged coal region of West Virginia. Even though coal is still mined here, it has declined greatly. However, hunting and ATV trails bring in thousands of people to the area each year. You'll even see small businesses and eateries here to serve the growing tourism. Being part of McDowell County, which at one time was the leading coal producing county in the United States, war had a part to play in the story of coal here in West Virginia. It was also the place where Homer Hickam of the Rocket Boys went to school at Big Creek High School and is a setting in the award-winning movie October Sky, but more on that in a minute. During the events of what's known as the American Civil War in the mid-19th century, eight or so counties, including McDowell, refused to join the newly formed state of West Virginia. Eventually, McDowell County broke away from the state of Virginia to join the new state of West Virginia in 1863. McDowell was divided into three districts, one of them being the Big Creek District here where war is located. At one point, McDowell even garnered the moniker, the Free State of McDowell. Maybe because it's rural location or the fiercely independent spirit of the people who lived here, or a combination of both. War is not unlike many of the small coal towns I've visited. I've been met with nothing but kindness in the interactions I've had, and I don't get the impression from anyone here that they're looking for pity or a handout, but instead common respect as they move forward into the future, navigating an increasingly post-coal reality. This is just one of the many places in Appalachia I would encourage anyone to come explore. Heading away from the downtown area in the direction of the old Big Creek High School, I pass into a slightly more residential area on the way. Now earlier I mentioned Homer Hickam and his story about the Rocket Boys in the movie October Sky. I also mentioned this in the episode I did on Welch. It was right here in war at Big Creek High School that he graduated in 1960, just five years before the school became fully integrated. But sadly, as I'm about to show you, that school was not only closed, but torn down in recent years. Apparently, a suspicious fire destroyed the school just days before it was to be demolished. Big Creek would be consolidated with Jaeger to form a new school in Bradshaw, West Virginia. Which, if you haven't seen my episode on Jaeger, be sure to check it out after you finish this one. What stands here now is a new K-8 school and the old Big Creek Gymnasium. It's wild to me because I played baseball right here against the Big Creek Owls on this very baseball field, I think. 
but the place doesn't look like I remember it decades ago. It's like my memory is failing me, which is just another reason to explore Appalachia because so much of what once was is fading. What comes next?